Okay, in this uh, section, which is section 9.4 of the text, page 261, I'm going to have a look at relativity of time. Now you might remember when I discussed the muon experiment, I said for observers um, on the ground, that is the science, scientists on the ground, they were measuring 23 microseconds as the lifetime, the average lifetime of a muon. The muons, if you were traveling with a muon, you would measure the um, average lifetime as being about 2.2 microseconds. So it's about a tenth. So the lifetime is relative. So that the time interval that a muon would exist for is dependent on the motion of the muon or motion of the observer uh, relative to the muon. Now, the way Einstein would have explained this um, is using a little model and it's basically based around the idea of the train again. So we've got a train and look, I won't put the train there, but you could imagine this is a carriage on the train. Now it's got a light, got the same light as before. That gives off light beams in all directions, but we're only interested in the beam that it shoots up. So let's imagine it's a torch that shoots up. I'm going to use a mirror. You can see this is a mirror. You can probably see yourselves in it. Um, I'm going to glue that to the top of the, or the ceiling of the carriage. So there it is there. Now let's imagine this beam of light is given off and it hits the mirror. You can see it hitting the mirror and it comes back down. Okay, so let's imagine there's a sensor in this light that can detect when the light leaves and measure how long the time interval it is to get back to the light. So the light beam has to go up and then back down and we'll get a time for that. Now you would agree with the person aboard this. Now let's say I was aboard this uh, train carriage and I was measuring the time for it to go up and down. Now I'd get a certain value. I'm at rest. That event is at rest with respect to you. So you would get the same value as I did. Now we call that T0 because we're moving. We're moving at a speed of zero with respect to the event. So that'd be T0. Now you could draw it on your diagram something like this. Look, instead of using a train track, I'll just do a straight line across there. And let's imagine there's the mirror, there's the pulse of light going up, and there it is coming back down. Okay, now <coughs> we said the time would be T0. So I'm going to write T0 on here, but it takes T0 to do the whole trip. So that section of the trip would be T0 on 2 and T0 on 2. That's the time taken. Now, let's have a look at in your frame of reference when this um, is moving. So here's my um, photon of light or my little pulse of light. So it's leaving here and the train's going to go like that. Okay, so when it's in the middle, the light will be at the mirror and then it'll come back down like that. Okay, because light will bounce you know, the laws of reflection and so on. So here it is here. It leaves there. As this goes along, it goes up to there, hits the mirror and comes back down. OK, so what you'd be seeing is a beam of light that went like that. OK, now I can do that. If I do that like this, if I'm standing here and I just do that up and down, you see it go up and down, I see it go up and down. But watch what happens. Keep an eye on the ball relative to the board when I just go up and down, but I'm walking at the same time. Okay? Now to me, it just went up and down in front of my face. But you would have seen it go up and down like that. So what you would have seen is that. That would have been the path the ball took in your frame of reference, or the photon of light took your frame of reference. Now. That is moving relative to you. That event was moving relative to you. So you'd call the total time T. Now, the total time is T. So this part of the journey would be T on 2. And this would be T on 2 as well. OK, now let's also um, give a value to the bottom. Now, let's say the train is moving at a speed of V. The time taken to get from there to there in your frame of reference would be related to V. It would be related to the um, time. 
Now let's say the time, would it be t or t0? Now it's moving at v, I'll get rid of the arrow, it's moving at v, would the time taken for the train to go from that point to that point be t or t0? Well it's moving relative to you, the event of the train being there and then there is moving relative to you. So it'll have to be t, not t0. It'll only be t0 if it's at rest with respect to the event. Okay, now we've got these triangles, so this triangle here um, would be t on 2. And that's t on 2 as well, the time taken to get from there to there. Now what we're going to do is have a look at these three triangles, or these two triangles, the three sides of the triangles, and work out the distances so we can apply Pythagoras' theorem to, to get some sort of relationship. Now we'll treat this as being a right angle. Now you know the formula V equals S on T. So the distance S is VT. Now if we're talking about light, the distance is just CT. Okay, so depending on whether we're talking about light or um, the movement of the train, we'll use one of those two. Now I'll do this in blue. I think it's easier for you to see. See, um, the distance here, instead of looking at it in terms of time, I'm going to look at it in terms of distance. So the distance from that hypotenuse there is that time multiplied by the speed of light. Remember, it's light that's doing this. So that'll be CT on 2. That'll be CT on 2. This one here, that's also the beam of light. So that's going to be CT0 on 2 and CT0 on 2. This one down here though, the distance is based on the speed of the train, which is V, not the speed of light. So this is going to be VT on 2 and VT on 2, okay? Because VT gives you the distance. So there's my little triangle. Now I'm going to write that down again and get rid of some of this um, and do some calculations on it. So it's CT on, I will we'll remember this, um, but basically I'll get rid of that and we'll use this. But I'll need to move this over um, to make it a bit easier to see. So let's do this. Here's my triangle. Now if you remember this was VT on 2, this was CT0 on 2 and CT on 2. Okay, right angle triangle. Now let's write this down in terms of um, Pythagoras' theorem. The square of the hypotenuse equals the sum of the squares on the other side. So it's CT0 on 2 squared plus VT on 2 squared. Now let's simplify that. We'll get rid of these two. I know it's 2 squared, but we can cancel that 2 out because it's all the way through. And we end up, and I'll expand this a little bit. Let's make that CT, C squared T squared equals C squared T0 squared plus V squared T squared. Okay, it should be, that should be fine. <coughs> now I'm going to divide through by C squared. So that'll come to 1. That'll come to 1, and this will be over c squared. Okay, let me rearrange this to group things together. Um, what I might do is bring this term here over to the other side and make it negative. So I've got t squared minus v squared t squared over c squared equals t0 squared. That's that thing there. That's been brought over here to make it a negative. Now I'll take the common factor out of here, the t squared. So that's t squared 1 minus v squared on c squared equals t0 squared. Now I'm going to take the square roots of both sides. So I'll take the, the square root of all of that, the square root of that. That gives me t0. This will give me t times 1 minus v squared on c squared. Okay, now that's the relationship. That's just derived from this. Now I'm going to rub all of this off because this is the main formula. That's almost the formula in the 
um, formula booklet and we'll just get rid of some of this that you don't need. Now this is in the textbook so if you want to look at that formula um, the derivation of that you can. Um, what I'm going to do is divide both sides by this. I'll get rid of this 1 minus v squared on c squared put it over here. So I end up with this. Now okay so that's a v squared on c squared I'll get rid of this. I've just rearranged it. Now this will be in your formula book. So you don't have to learn it. It's there. That's how it will appear. The questions you'll get will be <coughs> given t0 calculate t or given t calculate t0 providing you know the velocity or you could get one where you're given both of those and you have to calculate the velocity. That's a bit harder. Uh, let me do one because I think it's worthwhile. Um, look, what you, what you should have noticed is that t0 is a short time, t is much longer. Okay, um, so we can we can say that t is longer, so t is always greater than t0 always. So if I substitute some numbers into this, you should um, get that. Now look, I think I've got enough room to do this. Let's imagine, look I'll get rid of this and let's imagine you it took one second to go from the light took one second to go from there down. Okay, um, so let's imagine I know it wouldn't be one second, it might be one nanosecond but let's call it one second. So let's say T0 is one second. That's quite reasonable but I know it might be one nanosecond but we'll leave it like that. Let's say V is 0.8 C. So in other words it's 0.8 times 3 by 10 to the 8 meters per second. Now you could be given that as a, um, a number that which is 2.4 by 10 to the 8. Now you could be given speed V as a number in meters per second or kilometers per hour or whatever. I don't think you do kilometers, it would probably be meters per second. Or you can be given it as a value of C. Okay, we'll work out, we'll, we'll stick to values of C. If you had it as meters per second, you just substitute in here. It would be that number squared <coughs> and C squared, 3 by 10 to the 8 squared. Okay, I'm going to rub this off because we're not going to use that. We're just going to use this. So let's substitute in here. And the question would be, what's T? How long did that pulse take to get from the floor to the back to the floor again um, in your frame of reference? in which case it was moving. So T0 is 1. Now this is 1 minus V squared. So V is 0.8 C squared over C squared. Now you can see straight away the C's are going to cancel out because this is going to be 1.0 over the square root of 1 minus 0.8 squared because the C squared and c squared will cancel out and you're left with that. Now you could probably jump from that step straight to that if they're in units of c. You just write, write it in as 0.8 squared. Okay now that would come to 1.0 over 1 minus 0.8 squared is 0.64. Now that would be um, one minus, square root of 1 minus Oh, sorry, 0.36. Okay, 1 minus 0.64 is 0.36. The square root of that is 0.6. Okay, now 1 divided by 0.6 comes to about 1.7 seconds. 1.6 something seconds, but close to 1.7. Now in the text on about page 263 or 4, I've got this as a worked example. But for some reason, I don't know why, I put a C in there instead of a S. I think we've corrected it in the new version, but the one you've got is probably a C. But just cross that out and put a seconds in there. Okay, now that makes sense. 1.7 seconds, which would be this, and T0 is 1.0. So that is greater than that. That confirms that idea. 
Now I've got some little rhymes for remembering that, but I'll talk about those later. Now, that's, that's the sort of example you'll get. It's pretty straightforward to do. You can even work backwards if you have to, but you'll get one of those. Now you're bound to get a question like that. It could be a simple one like this, worth about two, maybe three marks. Um, it could be a multi-choice worth one mark. Now, let me just show you one last thing. If you remember back to the um, muon experiment, now I told you that muons had a half-life, oh sorry, a um, rest lifetime, which is a bit different to half-life, rest lifetime of 2.2 microseconds. Now I'm going to leave that as micro, that's by 10 to the negative 6. I told you at the time that the scientists measure those, they measured the speed of those um, muons going at about 0.9954. Now I looked at the original um, paper that was written by the two scientists back in 1964. It's available on the internet and I got all their data for the textbook um, so it's accurate data and they used something like that or one of their calculations was that. Now um, the question is what is the time as measured what was the rest oh, sorry the rest lifetime is 2.2 as measured by someone traveling along with the muon what would be the time as measured by the scientists who were seeing the mu muon moving they weren't at rest to the muon now if you remember um, I got a value of 23 microseconds as the answer now let's just check this out what you do is T0 is 2.2. I'm going to work in microseconds and the answer will be in microseconds. Um, 1 minus V squared, now it's 0.9954 squared. Now like I said, because it's in units of C, the C's would cancel out. So you can just do that. And if you go and do the calculation, now I'm not going to do it here, you just square that number, take it away from 1, take the square root and divide it into 2.2, you get 23 microseconds. Now that agrees with this value that I told you earlier. Now I checked that before I did it in the textbook, I made sure that worked. Okay, so I'm going to leave it there. There's quite a few questions at the end of this 9.4. Now they'll be the backbone of chapter 9. You know, you, the mathematical questions in chapter 9 revolve around this formula. You need to be able to do that. You need to do 20 or 30 of these before the exam. Hard ones, simple ones of course, but you need to do them. There's plenty in the text, there's plenty in the revision questions and the practice exams and so on. And I've done some videos discussing how to do these um, and they're on the, um, the videos that we'll assign to you um, to have a look at as well. So I'm going to leave it at there. Um, that's it.